Amen. James chapter 1, uh, I'll take out my thought from verse 22. Let's open to verse 22. The Bible says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgeth it what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. The title of my sermon this morning is Overcoming Bad Habits. Overcoming Bad Habits. Today my aim is to challenge you to change something this year. When you look into that glass, don't just walk out and forget what, you know, how, how you are or what you, what you look like. You know, change something this year. So maybe it's an ignored habit or two that you should change, uh, but it's something that is becoming a part of you. You're starting to forget about it. You know, it's just, you know, this, this, it's just part of who I am, you know. And you look into the glass, the Word of God, and you're just ignoring it, and you're finding ways to go around it. You know, you're living with that bad habit, and you keep going around it and going around it is just, it's just part of it. That's just what you tell yourself every time you look at the Word of God. See, a habit is anything we do regularly that becomes second nature to us. When it's second nature, you just fall into it and you do it, then it's becoming a habit. Now, if that habit is detrimental, whether physically or spiritually, it is a bad habit, right? So a bad habit leaves you with a feeling of guilt. It leaves you with a feeling of anger after you're done. You know, you, you do it and you're angry and you feel guilty. You're angry with yourself, you know, for doing that again. Why? Because it is sinful. And I'm talking to believers here, right? So it is sinful, so you feel bad every time you fall into that habit. And no matter how pleasant of a season sin gives you, guilt, anger, resentment usually follows. No matter how much you enjoy it, no matter how short or long the season is. Because there are some scenes or habits we get into and the pleasantness is just very short. While some last for a while, but it's still a season and the other season is coming. The season of anger and guilt and resentment and you know, despair, all of that. Uh, and this is even before getting into the consequences of the sin. Because you have the Holy Spirit li living in you, you feel that anger, you feel that guilt, you feel convicted because, because of that sin that you did. And you've not even faced the consequences yet. Now, compare that with a, with a good habit, no matter how difficult, no matter how hard it is to do that habit, uh, that thing that is good, joy and fulfillment usually follows. Right? Oh, it was very difficult to go out soul winning, you know, but I decided I'm going to go soul winning. You know, after the soul winning, you feel good. You're like, this is great. And the, and the consequences, that is the blessings, have not even come yet. The rewards are not even there yet. But you feel good. So th that's the difference between a good habit and a bad habit. Now, there are some examples of bad habits, right? One is procrastination. You know, you're procrastinating, I'll do this later on, you keep pushing it and keep pushing it. And this is maybe because you're a perfectionist or because you are lazy. It's one of the two, and none of them are good, right? When you're a perfectionist, you can't get to do anything. I'm like, I'm trying, you know, before I read my Bible, I have to make sure everywhere's quiet, you know, kids are in bed. You know, everything is just perfect. <laughs> then I read my Bible. I have no problems. Or before I build this, you know, before you do anything, everything has to be perfect. You have to be sure that you can do it before you. That's a perfectionist. And that person hardly gets anything done. And uh, if you're lazy, then you just keep procrastinating. I'll do it later. I'll do it. I still have some time. Procrastination. You're overthinking things and you, you, it tends, you tend to procrastinate. And many people have already started pushing their goals. For this year. You know, I'm going to start reading my Bible, but, you know, I'll start next month. You know, I'll be serious. You know, by next month, I'll be very serious. <laughs> They're already pushing their goals. You know, I'm going to start eating well, but, you know, I'll start, you know, next week. You know, this week is still like, kind of like New Year's week. <laughs> New Year's celebration. You're procrastinating. So that is a bad habit. Another bad habit is overspending. And that simply means you have lack of self-control. You cannot rule your own spirit. It's covetousness. Everything you see, you want to get. Especially in a world where we're living on credit. Right? So you can just buy and buy and buy. 
and just overspend so easily because of credit. Another bad habit is wasting time on devices. You're literally wasting time. Talk about TV, movies, shows or TV shows, uh, social media, video games. When you're wasting time on those things, uh, it's a bad habit. You just, once you fall into it, two hours go by. And you're like, you know, what did I do in these two hours? Right? So you're wasting time. And, tr and you try to justify it with some carnal knowledge. You know, oh yeah, but you know, if I, I'm just resting, or oh, I'm just relaxing, but time is just going. You won't have, you won't normally rest or, or relax doing those things for that long, right? So you're wasting time, and you're trying to justify it is exactly what I'm talking about, or what James 1 is talking about, where he says, you look into the word of God, you know that it is wrong, but you just go and you forget how you look like. You look into the glass, you say this is wrong, but you forget it because you don't want to change anything, it's not becoming a part of you. You're like, oh yeah, and you just forget how you look like. You forget that that is a bad habit. That when you come out of, after you spend all that time, you're like, oh, I should have gotten this done, I should have gotten something else done. So wasting time, that means you're not walking circumspectly, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Another bad habit is not getting enough sleep. Yeah, that's a bad habit. What are you doing so late at night? What is that thing so important? Because it messes up your next day. You know, you're not preparing for the next day. You want to read your Bible in the morning. You want to do things in the morning, exercise in the morning. So, but you have a bad habit of not sleeping early or not getting enough sleep. So you think sleeping in is cool, right? But it's just because of the bad habit of not sleeping, uh, getting, or sleeping early, thereby get, not getting enough sleep. There is a time for everything. And usually things that you do very late at night, you could skip them. They are not usually productive. You know, things you do very late at night. If you say, oh, that's when I read my Bible, then try to change that time because you're giving God the, the <laughs> how do I put this? The time where you're so weak and tired, you cannot even grasp anything. You're so tired and you're just, you know, let me just read my Bible. You're just checking a box at that, at that point. It depends on how your day went anyway. But if your day was so busy, maybe you had to go to work, travel, come back, has happened to me, you still have to read your Bible that day, read your Bible that night, you know? <laughs> Just do something. But that shouldn't be like your time when you're so tired and everything. But that's when we tend to waste time and sleep late and mess up the next day. So that's a bad habit. Another bad habit is not exercising. Not exercising. Bodily exercise profited little. But it profits something. Yes. So there is profit. That's what the Bible says. And why did I bring it up? It's because we live in America where we, we could just be sedentary. We, we could just stay without moving. You, you park so close to the exit, or sorry, to the entrance of the mall or something, or the entrance of your workplace. Everybody's struggling to park right next to handicapped parking spots. Right? <laughs> right? Even me, I try. See, I'm talking to myself here too, folks. <laughs> no one wants to go park all the way far back and walk. So my point is, we, we try not to do anything, any kind of labor, any kind of walking. Most of us are sedentary while walking uh, in our jobs. And just the lifestyle we live, because of driving, we don't tend to walk, up, walk about or do things or lift things. You know, everything has a weight limit, 50 pounds, this. So we don't do that much work because of we're Americans. So we should exercise. It should be part of your, of your um, routine, you know, exercising. Put that somewhere, somehow. Because our bodies are designed for hard times. You have to understand that. Your body is designed for hard times. And that's why uh, carbohydrates, things that, you know, will pack fat, taste very good. So that when, when a hard time, you know, your body will want to eat it. So that you can pack it and you, you can pack fat and, so that when the hard times come, you can use that energy that is stored in your body. But the things that hard times don't come. <laughs> so we keep eating the sweet food and eating the sweet food. <laughs> but the hard times don't come. And that's the problem. Uh, so, uh, and that's why we store fat so easily because the body's getting ready for the rainy day when there is no food. Then you can last for a day or even two without food. Believe you me, it's possible. You might think it's impossible, but <laughs> it's because you're running on carbs. Uh, you know, the body can run on ketones. Anyway, moving on. So speaking of not exercising, another one that goes right next to that is eating too much. Right? Eating too much is a problem. It's, it's another bad uh, habit that you, we can fight. And we should not live to eat, but eat to live. You know, try to figure out what that means. You know, why am I eating? It's because I'm hungry and I need these nutrients and I need to survive. That's why you're eating. So eating for pleasure 
and not for nourishment. That is the problem. And to go with that, unhealthy eating, that's another bad habit. You just cannot pass a Burger King without stopping. You know, it's like, oh, there's a Burger King, oh, I'm just so weak. <laughs> You know, the smell during the summer as you're passing, the aroma of the food, KFC or anything. You just, I'll oh, just pick up one burger. You know, I'll just pick up this, pick up fries, pick up the smoothie thing, you know. Junk food, unhealthy diet, or you don't even know what you're eating. You don't care what you're eating, you're just eating anything. So that is, you, you, you don't care, even if it's not fast food. So be careful what you're eating, check what you're eating and make sure you're eating healthy. Then you have tardiness, that is not coming late, not being punctual, sorry, not coming early, not being punctual at, uh, at, me, at times that you set. And this shows that you have no regard for others, it's just about yourself, you know? And you will not last long in your secular job with, with tardiness. So there are many more. You know, having no routine is a bad habit. Being a workaholic is a bad habit. Bad hygiene is a bad habit. All these things are bad habits, right? But you see, these are all carnal habits. Yes, they are carnal habits, but they will quickly put an end to your spiritual goals. These habits. These bad habits, they will put an end to, to goals you have spiritually because God wants to use your body. Your body is the temple of the Lord. So there are other habits that are related to specific sins. You can call them spiritual habits, uh, spiritual bad habits, but they are related to specific sins. For example, smoking. That's a specific sin. And if you're into smoking, you can't help yourself, that's a bad habit. Don't get into it because now your body would want it, you know, with all that kind of addictions, like drinking, and by drink, I mean drinking alcohol, or even drinking too much juice, right? Don't be giving to too much wine or too much wine. So drinking alcohol, that's another bad habit that you don't want to get stuck into. Uh, every alcoholic starts as a casual drinker. No alcoholic just started off, you know? That's not how it starts. It starts as, you know, I drink, you know, uh, Tuesday evenings, Saturday evenings. That's how they all start. <laughs> you know, I drink, oh, just workplace, you know, Friday happy hour, you know, just one or two uh, glasses, I don't know how to drink, or one or two beer cans. You know, that's how they all start. So don't get into that habit. Now, or watching inappropriate and explicit content, and you know the actions that follow after that. So that is a bad habit. You know, these are associated to specific sins. Or not reading your Bible and praying. That's a bad habit. You don't want to get into that habit. It's very easy for the flesh to fall into that habit. Not so winning. Telling lies. <laughs> That's a bad habit. Some people just tell lies. They can't help it. Just, just tell the truth. What's the big deal? And when children start getting into that habit, you make sure you spank that out of them. Because they'll grow up to tell lies and think they can get away with it until they tell the lie that lands them in jail or gets them to commit murder. So that's how we start, just telling lies. See, I tell my children, if you, you had told me the truth, I wouldn't have spanked you. Like, who did this? Oh, no. If you lie, that's when I'll, I'll spank you for the lie, not even because you did it. You tell me the truth and you can be saved. You know, possibly, it's not every time. <laughs> but the lie angers me even more. Why are you trying to get away with it? You know, because you can't get away with it with God. They have to treat me you know, give me that fear. Then when they're older, then, then they can fear God. So understand that, don't lie. So it starts at a young age, but you know, if you're already an adult telling lies, you want to get out of that bad habit. Uh, another ha bad habit is fear. God has not given us the spirit of, of, of fear, but of love and of power and of sound mind. So fear, just afraid of things. So oh, I'm afraid of doing this. Oh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. You don't have faith that God is going to protect you. You know, make, like for example, I'm, I'm not saying for some people it might be very bad, but you look outside, you're like, oh yeah, I think there's, there's, there's no slit on the way I can drive to church. <laughs> you know, I'm just afraid, I'm afraid. Every little thing makes you afraid. You know, no, don't be afraid of little things. Or only fear God, let's put it that way. So there's a lion in the street, oh I can't do this. Oh if, if I do, if fear is a bad habit, you fall into it and your body just quickly goes into fear. When there's something big that God is telling you to do or that you want to do, you find an excuse, but that is fear. So you cannot change your future without changing your habits. You know, your habit is what make, tells, tells you what you will be in future. So we all have habits, and this is how the flesh works. God put, gave that to us so that the flesh can get into routines or get into a habit. When the flesh uh, when you keep doing something over and over again, it becomes a habit, it becomes a second nature to you. So we should use that to our advantage. For example, if you're someone that doesn't exercise 
And this is a very good example to show you that this is how the flesh works and you can use it positively. And that's why God gave it to us. If you're someone that doesn't exercise, if you want to start exercising, your body can get into that habit of exercising. You start exercising, it might be very difficult. Oh, you're like, oh, this is so painful, this is so difficult. Your body doesn't want to do it because you're in the habit of not exercising. Now, but if you continue and you continue, yes, some days you might lapse, you come back, you continue, continue, it will get to a point that your body is now used to exercising and that is a habit. And it might even be serious because you cannot go a day without exercising. <laughs> it, it can flip or the other way around. How many of us have experienced something like that? Exercising, okay, amen. I see my wife's hand, God bless that hand. Because I told her that exact thing. Because <laughs> I have experienced that, I experienced that in college. You know, I decided to you know, go pump some weights, and I found out I couldn't, I couldn't go a day without it. And I was like, wait, I didn't like exercising before. But you're now falling into the habit. So you have to understand how this flesh works so that you can subdue it, so you can discipline it, and you can make good habits then you now find out that it's now hard to fall into those bad habits again because those bad habits are ended because of the good habits. So I'm talking about overcoming bad habits. Uh, uh, what you change in your day to day is what shapes your future, is what gets you your goals. And that's what I'm talking about bad habits today. God commanded Joshua, Joshua some good habits to have. Our memory verse for the month, Joshua 1 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And like I say, it's for then thou, you Joshua, you will make your way prosperous when you do those things. It's not like, oh, you do those things, then, you know, God just miraculously, you know, do it. It's, it's what you do. Now, God is going to help you, don't get me wrong. But you will make your way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now, there are three good habits uh, the three good habits that God listed in that verse, they destroy bad habits. Just th these three. The first one, speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. It, it seems like, oh, so easy, just speak the word of God. But that means you have to condition your heart, keep your heart, make sure that the word of God is in your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So when you're speaking, you know, your reproof, your rebu you rebuke, your exhortation, let it be with the edification of the word of God. Now, the Bible says open rebuke is better than secret love. In Acts chapter 4, verse 20, uh, the apostle said, that's Peter, we cannot speak... The, uh, we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So if you're going to be speaking the word of God, let this book of the law not depart out of thy mouth. So every time you're speaking, make sure it is, you know, seasoned with grace, it's the word of God, it's helping people. And if you cannot but speak what you've seen and heard, what are you seeing and what are you hearing? Right? <laughs> See how many, just the first one, can destroy many bad habits because you're filling yourself up with, with the word of God, with spiritual things, so that you can speak spirit and life. So, and the Bible says that the preacher should use acceptable words. You say, oh, that's for the pastor. That's for everybody. Right. You're the priest too. You're standing in the gap for the world. So how are you gonna talk to people, talk, be a light to the world? You know, use acceptable words. The words that are written are acceptable words, right? The pure words of God, right? The quick and powerful word of God, you know, speak life and not death. Don't murder people with your tongue. The next one in that verse is meditate on the word of God day and night. That is, think about the word of God. Your, your thought process, how does this apply in my life right now? How does this help me right now? That's what you're thinking. The word of God, how, how, because the word of God is spirit and life, right? So how is it applying? Your, the word of God is relevant. So you're reading the story of David and Goliath. You're, you're reading the story of uh, Balaam. You're reading, any story you're reading. It, it can apply to your life. That's why you should pray, God, open my eyes that I may behold, behold wondrous things from thy law. You want to behold it. You want to understand it. It comes to life. Don't think, oh, I already got the explanation of this verse or this story. I've gotten the intent of this story and that's it. No. Think about, God is giving you that word. That word is sufficient for that day. Right? It's sufficient. So find out for today, how can this apply to me? How can this apply to my goals? That, that, you get that through meditation. So the, the word of God, it should be part of your thought process, your decision making, how you make decisions, it should be with the word of God. Open to Hebrews chapter five, Hebrews chapter five verse 12. The last one there in that verse is do the word of God, 
right? Don't let it depart out of your mouth. Meditate on it. Then do the word of God. That means practice and exercise yourself in the word of God. And this brings about maturity. When you're doing it, then you will have, you, that will make your way prosperous and that, and that shall have good success. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12, the Bible says, for, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become as such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So when you know the word of God, when you've meditated on it, you, you've seen how it applies in your life, make sure you do it. Because some people just, as again, you read, you see, you look at yourself in the glass. You see those, the changes you need to make, you ignore it. You forget how you look like. You know? Make sure you do it. Make sure you make those adjustments. You know, practice the word of God. Exercise the word of God. Then your way will be prosperous. Then you have good success. And you'll be mature. You can help others too. So it's not just about yourself. You know, I just want to learn, learn, and no, no, no. And you're not giving it out. Then you'll be like the Dead Sea. And what does this mean? It means reading your Bible regularly. So how regularly? Daily is about right. You say, Pastor, where is it in the Bible? I say, read your Bible daily. Open to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy 17, 18. But if you're reading your Bible, you will see that God is telling you to read it daily. How? But, uh, the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. You say, okay, but I can go three days without food. So it doesn't mean, it means I can go three days without reading my Bible. But Jesus taught them to pray. What did he say? Give, give, us, uh, give, me, uh, give me my daily bread, right? So you're supposed to pray for what? Daily bread. <laughs> now, fasting is different, you know, or hard times are different, right? But ideally, you should be praying for your daily bread, and man shall not live by bread alone. That just tells you, ergo, read your Bible every day. That's what God is trying to say. But if that is not enough, you're like, oh, yeah, it's kind of like a fast stretch there, you know? <laughs> because God just says meditate on it. So you can be meditating on it without reading it for that day, you know? But look at what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 17. This is about when Israel will get a king. And one of the things the king should do, the Bible says in verse 18, Deuteronomy 17, 18, And it shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book, out of that which is before the priest, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, <laughs> that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of his, this law and these statutes to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, that, and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, or to, uh, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. So if God is telling the king in the Old Testament to read the Bible all the days of his life, how much more you and I? Well, royal priesthood. Right? I mean, he has given us the spiritual kingdom. Rightfully kings. I mean, the kings in the Old Testament is like, you know what, if you guys insist on getting a king. You know, it's not my will, but you're insisting. Okay, this guy should read the Bible. How about I'm making you kings? <laughs> you will reign with me. And you're telling me you shouldn't read your Bible every day? I mean, you should do, go over and beyond this. In fact, <laughs> right? It's not just, yeah, you should be studying it, know it, apply it, help other people. The king is just supposed to know it. So that, oh, yeah, he doesn't break the law or go outside the constitution. Someone should tell that to our president, right? So, but uh, we should do even more, <laughs> right? More, more is required of us, right? And now the Bible is even very readily available. Most of, uh, if you're not illiterate, is laziness in this day and age. Now, back in the days, if you couldn't read and write, you know, it happens, you know. There's the, what they call them, the peasants and the elites, or what they call, I can't remember the name. Peasants and there's a class of people. What do they call them? You know? It just skipped my mind. Anyway, the uh, peasants and the people in the royal bloodline, uh, they, they call them a name, I just can't remember it. But uh, without further ado, let's go to five steps to overcome bad habits. Five steps to overcome bad habits. Step number one, identify the bad habit. And that goes back to James chapter 1, verse 22. I'll read that again. 
But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, that means you're hearing the word of God, you're not doing the word of God. He says, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. You cannot look in the glass on the mirror and forget what you look like. That means you're not identifying your bad habits, you're just forgetting it. You're seeing yourself, you know yourself. Right? You're reading the Bible, the Bible is piercing right into your heart, you know, bone, uh, spirit, soul. It's piercing right into it. it. It's telling you who you are. You know the right things you're doing. You know the wrong things you're doing. If you're reading your Bible, if you're coming to church, if you're listening to preaching, fellowship with the brethren, you know what is right, you know what is wrong. But you're ignoring it and you're being like this guy that is forgetting what he looks like. So when you see the truth about yourself from the word of God, don't just forget it. Don't just ignore it. God commands us to forgive. God commands us to walk in the spirit. God commands us to love our wives as Christ loved the church. See, I mean, I can keep going down the list. You see the wrong things you're doing. You see when you're not falling in line. Do you just ignore your faults? That means you're not identifying your bad habits. And that's the person described in this passage. And if you don't identify your bad habits, you cannot even begin to start overcoming them. If you don't say, I have a problem here, if you like, I think it was said, uh, growing up anyway, it, uh, f uh, solving 50% of the solution of a problem is when you identify the problem, <laughs> right? In fact, I practice that. I mean, in the school, if you understand the problem, then you have solved it. Especially those math problems that have grammar with it, <laughs> where they're like, oh, they have, this guy has five apples and two oranges, and you're like, man, what is this problem? <laughs> you don't know the problem. Man, did you just said, you know, five minus two? Oh, yeah, it's three, you know? But the grammar, you have to understand the problem. <laughs> so if you have the problem understood, like this is a bad habit, I've identified it, you ha then you can begin to solve the problem. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You say, oh, those are just the reprobates, the people of this world. Believers do it sometimes. Oh, you know what I'm doing? I mean, it's good. God knows my heart. You know, but, you know you're just ignoring and saying, oh, I'm good. Oh, I'm working for God. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to live a life that's pleasing to God. Now you're calling good, evil, and evil good. You know? You're, you're not going soul winning. Uh, you're not doing the things that God tells you to do. Don't try to justify yourself. Right. You know? Then you're ignoring yourself in the mirror. For, the, for if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. The Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Now, because something is not sinful inherently, or is not intrinsically sinful, it does not mean that it cannot be done sinfully. Right? Like, eating is not sinful, but it can be done sinfully. Uh, exercising is not sinful, but it can be done sinfully. Uh, sleeping, le leisure, everything. So you say, okay, maybe I sleep too much, or maybe I have too much leisure, or maybe I do this, I do that so much. Oh, but you know, it's still a good thing you're excusing yourself when you know that what you're doing is wrong. Then you're calling good evil, you're not identifying your bad habits, then you cannot change. So identify those bad habits so that you can change. Second point, remove the triggers, the triggers of this bad habit that gets your body to go into it. Because if you ask yourself, do you want to keep doing this, you say no. But why do you always do it? Because it's a habit. You have to overcome that habit. So something causes you to get into that habit. Open to James chapter 4, James chapter 4 verse 7. So what causes you to fall into that bad habit? That is called the trigger. For example, when you hang out with your co-workers, you tend to drink. So how about you stop hanging out with your co-workers? Remove that trigger. Or when you're stressed out, you're feeling stressed out, then you tend to smoke. Or you tend to eat too much, or you go for a shopping spree. You know, these days it's very easy to go window shopping and stuff and buy something. You don't have to enter your car, dress up, and go window shopping. It's called Amazon.com. You just, mm, oh, that looks cool. You have your, your, your shopping cart. You have your later shopping cart. You have your wish list. You have your secret wish list. I mean, you can make as much list as you want. <laughs> then you'll be hoping that one day there'll be a glitch in the system and Amazon will just send all the things in your list to you for free. You guys now know what I've been thinking about, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. 
<laughs> you know, you just be filling up your cart. Oh, I'm not just going to buy anything until one day you're so stressed out, you know, look at that cart and you just overspend. You know, I deserve it. I need, to, I need to treat myself today, you know. So because of stress or idleness, idleness leads to a lot of evil. I mean, you could do so many things just because you're idle. How about you remove that trigger? James chapter 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So, the trigger is there. It's to get you into that habit. And once you, once you allow that trigger, the bullet is fired. There's, you can't bring it back. Right? So, remove the trigger. Identify. Okay, this is the bad habit. What causes me to go into that bad habit? is this trigger. So, I'm going to resist the devil. I'm going to submit myself to the Lord. Then I can resist the devil. Then avoid the trigger. And that is where the hard work is. You've identified the problem. I want that hard work to remove that trigger. I don't want to hang out with co-workers. I want to come to church more often. I want, you know, like, make sure you can submit yourself to the Lord so that that trigger is removed, so that you don't fall into that bad habit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. The things that you want, that's wood, like things you want to do, you cannot do it because the flesh, the spirit, you are fighting. So how about you walk in the spirit so you will not do the things that you want to do? Over to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. So you have to put under your body. That's put your body under. So, like, um, suppress the, 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 thing, the desires of the flesh, right? Discipline your flesh because your body wants to go to autopilot. I gave you the example with the exercise thing. Autopilot is, okay, I want to not exercise. Until you, you discipline flesh, discipline flesh, then your body goes to autopilot. I want to exercise. Why am I to exercise today? That's how the body works. So you can control the body. Use the body for the glory of God and the Holy Spirit is there to help you because we're believers. Right? The Holy Spirit is there to help you. God will get in us both, both through will and to do of his good pleasure. You can overcome sin. Amen. If the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. Right? So lay aside that weight, the sin that easily besets you, the Bible says. And it starts with the mind. So don't faint in your mind. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, the Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down what? Imaginations, right? The things you're thinking of, things in your mind, uh, anything that is, is, okay, anyway, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So submit to the Lord, then resist the devil. Cast down those imaginations. Bring everything down that's, bringing, uh, that's coming higher than the knowledge of God. You know, remove those triggers. Tag those triggers, remove them. And it starts in your mind, the imaginations in your mind. So that's why God says meditate day and night. You know, because you can just say, oh, I read my Bible. Boom. Yeah, you're not meditating on it. You're not thinking on, on the Bible. You're not, you're not thinking, uh, your decisions are not made off of the Bible. But you've read your Bible for the day. Did God just say read your Bible? No, he says meditate day and night. And you actually thought that, oh, reading the Bible <laughs> was, you know, was the harder one. You know, God is actually giving us a harder one. Meditate on it day and night. That's what the Bible says in Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lonely, uh, sorry, lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's what you should think on. Meditate. This, and how are you going, where are you going to find all these things? The Word of God. Right. Which book will you pick up that has all these things? Perfectly. The Word of God. Amen. All right, let's go to point number three. Uh, ways, steps to overcome uh, bad habits. So the first one, identify the bad habits. Second one, remove the triggers. Identify them, remove the triggers. That's a hard work. Then third, replace with a good habit. Replace with a good habit. If you're still in Philippians 4, <laughs> maybe I, I intend to open it, but Philippians 4 verse 9, so it says, think on these things, verse 8 and verse 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, 
and the God of peace shall be with you. So it's telling you to do something. It's not just so you're just meditating. I'm just thinking. After you finish thinking, I've like you applied it to your mind, and you've pulled down the, the strongholds and everything that raises up against the knowledge of God, imaginations, you cast all those things down, then do it after your obedience is fulfilled. Then you can uh, uh, revenge on the disobedience, right? So then do it. So meditate and do, as it says in Joshua chapter 1. You can see Old Testament and New Testament is the same God that wrote it, the same Holy Spirit. It's the same things it's telling us. He's just explaining to us more and more. Over to Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. So what are, what are they supposed to do, the traditions of the apostles? Right? That's what it says. The things you've seen in me do, Philipp, uh, Paul was telling the Philippians. So form good habits. Right? When I say form good habits, I'm not saying reinvent the wheel, like make your own good habits. What you've seen in them do. That's what you've read in the word of God. What the apostles have laid down, the foundations of the apostles, the prophets, Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone. Right? Those are the things we should do. Don't reinvent the wheel. Find those, the old path. Where is the good way? That's what you should do. Walk those old paths. Because there can be no vacuum in this world, in anything. So if you remove the bad habits, right, or you, you find the trigger, you avoid the trigger. So now that you avoided the trigger, you're supposed to spend two hours wasting time on a device. What are you going to do? Do, 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 do. You know? <laughs> like, what are you supposed to do? You didn't go for a happy hour anymore, or you didn't waste time on the device. So what are you going to do? Guess what? Another trigger will happen. Idleness, which will lead to something else. Which will lead to even worse. I mean, idleness can lead, I, I, it, it could lead to anything. <laughs> I just tell you that. So you need to fill it up. If not, look at what Jesus explains to the apostles or to the people he was talking to. In Matthew 12, 43, it says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it, what? Empty, swept, and garnished. You know, I enter like an apartment. You're trying to rent an apartment. And they're like, oh yeah, this one is all garnished. This one is clean. You know, you can even rent it with the furniture that is there. You're like, that's the one I want. And they're like, oh no, no, this is the show one. The one we give you is empty. <laughs> This happened to me, so I know. I was like, oh, I like this apartment. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll show you. Yours is there. And I went to mine, it's just empty. It's like, it didn't look like that. No. <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say, if you have that picture in your mind, or, or maybe you're going for a house showing, uh, what do you call that thing, house showing, uh, then you see it. So that's how this spirit comes back, and it's just empty. There's nothing going on in the house, right? What does he do? Verse 45. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. That means lawless. Don't follow the laws of God. That's what he's trying to say. And they enter in and dwell there. The last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So be careful. There's, don't think you can just create a vacuum. Oh, I've cleaned out my life, and that's it. No. Clean out your life. That's one step. Another step is... Um, filling your life with good things, with godly things, with spiritual things. If not, you'll be worse. If not, idleness. Worse things will hold you down. It's like the doctor prescribes taking your medicine and you only take, instead of taking five of it, you only take two times or three times. Oh man, the, the, the disease will come back or the, the germs will multiply and come back with, with a vengeance. And you will now be in a worse state. So you should take your full dose. So what's our full dose? Reading the Bible every day. Just take it like aspirin and meditate it. You know, you get, just take it. This, that's what's prescribed for you, <laughs> right? Uh, open to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. As you open there, I'll read you Psalm 119, verse 9. The Bible says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. That's how you cleanse your way. And in verse 11, it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. So you've cleansed your way, then make sure you hide the word of God in your heart. It's not just use the word of God as a soap. You wash your heart, or wash the, then you just forget about it. No, you take that word of God and keep it in your heart so that you will not sin against the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4, look at verse 20, the Bible says, But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard, sorry, if so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, that's your way of life, 
Concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful loss, and be renewed, renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So you're putting off the old man, your old way of life, but it doesn't mean, oh yeah, that's it. No, then you, you renew your mind, right? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that acceptable, good, and perfect will of God. So when you renew your mind, then you put on the new man. And don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to, according to the measure of faith that's given to you. So you put on the new man, and you grow thereby, right? And he gives examples. Look at verse 25. Let's look at the examples. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak truth. <laughs> Do you see that? So wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needed. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of thy of, of out of your mouth, but that but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind one to another, tender hearted, for Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven you. Open to First John chapter one. Like so, I remove, you put in. You remove, you put in. Fill it up with good works, right? Don't just remove and think, oh yeah, I've overcome this bad habit. It's just worse for you <laughs> if you don't form good habits. Walk that old path. You know, do what God tells uh, tells you to do. Fill it up with godly things. You know, the work of God. All right. Point number four: Don't miss church. You know, I I, I don't want to butter put it sugarcoat it or anything. It's just flat out. Don't miss church. Right. <laughs> to to overcome bad habits. You, if you're missing church, then you're not helping yourself. Because God has given us church to help us. Especially if the bad habit you're trying to overcome is missing church. <laughs> you know? So don't miss church. And usually when people miss church, it's a symptom of something else. There's something else going on. Right? It's usually a symptom of something else. Um, so, but don't miss church, right? Uh, uh, be around like-minded, godly believers. Fellowship with the brethren. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 6, it says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, he, as, he's, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You want to overcome that bad habit, you don't want to do those things, and you want to fellowship with the Lord, then you need to fellowship with the brethren. Because if not, you're lying, you're deceiving yourself. Right? You say you're walking in the light. No. But when you're fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin, uh, cleanses, us from all, cleanses us from all sin. Right? So it will help you to overcome the bad habits. So the church, as I said, is a gift to all of us. Right? Even to me, church a gift to me. To help us, especially in the, in the area of faithfulness, in the area of righteousness, in the area of doing God's service, getting rewards. That's the opportunity that we have. Open to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. In James chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, Confess your fault one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. So, confessing your fault one to another, confiding in one another, talking, edifying one another, that happens in church, in fellowshipping with the brethren. You know, that's where you make your friends. That's where, you know, you, you grow your family, all of that. Do you want, as the church grows and stuff, and your kids grow, do you want your children to be getting married to people in the world? You still want them to get married to people from church. Now, it might not be this church, it might be another church, but it's still church. So why are you missing church? See, if, some, if someone wants to get married to my child, I'll be like, you know, where's, who's your pastor? I want to see who's your pastor. <laughs> I'm just like, that's my own child. That's what I'll do. I don't know about you, right? You just be like, oh yeah, you can get married to the person, your, your own child. No, be like, who's your pastor? I want to know about you. So don't miss church. <laughs> I mean, there's so many reasons. It could be a sermon on its own. But you're then Galatians 6, verse 1. The Bible says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, 
Ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself first, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Open to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22. So, confess your faults one to another. And now, he's telling the brethren in church, help the guy that is overtaking in a fault. Do you see how everything just comes together? And I'm talking about overcoming bad habits. So you say, oh, I have this bad habit. I always come late to church. Can you call me when you're leaving? <laughs> you know, help me out. Can you pray for me? Can you, like, help? I want to come overcome this bad habit. Oh, I miss church. Oh, I do oh, this. I, you confess your faults one to another. You, somebody's there to help you. You know, that's, that's what happens. I, it, this is just an example. There are so many other examples, you know. Uh, so the church is a gift to all of us. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I told you to open Proverbs, hold there. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, the Bible says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So if, if you're missing church, that means who are you talking with? Right? You're, the world. You're talking with the world. Your manners are going to be corrupted and corrupted and corrupted. And you start getting some different sets of bad habits. Instead of overcoming the bad habits that you want. Right? So don't get yourself into evil communications. Right? How about you speak, lift up holy hands with the brethren, as the Bible says. Right? Uh, Proverbs 15, 22, the Bible says, Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Open to Galatians chapter 6, Galatians 6, 7. So without counsel, purposes are disappointed. There are many purposes that we have for this year. There are many goals that you should have set for this year. Yo, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. <laughs> You'll be disappointed. And in the multitude of counselors, they are established. So my question is, where are you getting your counsel? Who are you talking with? You say, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a self-made man. You know, I don't need counselors. You're not that smart. Just tell you that. Nobody's that smart. Somebody's influencing you. Somebody's counseling you. Whether it's the TV you're watching, or YouTube, or TikTok, or I don't know, social media. It is influencing you. Yeah. So be careful. You be in your echo chamber telling you you're the best and the greatest thing since sliced bread. But when you come to church, they'll tell you, yo, that's, that's wrong. Right. <laughs> you know, what you're doing is wrong. You hear different, you know, perspectives, right? You need to be in a normal setting. <laughs> so without counsel, purposes are, uh, are disappointed. When the multitude of counselors, they are established. So get your counsel from godly, uh, fellow godly believers. And so um, that's, why, that's why church is important. All right, the last point is patience. Patience. You know, steps to overcoming bad habits. You're there in Galatians chapter 6. Look at verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting, life everlasting. Verse 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Overcoming bad habits is not a night and day thing. You can't do it overnight, right? And that's why the Bible says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Don't think, oh, I want to overcome this bad habit. But I'm not consistently sowing good. I'm sowing into the flesh. You're helping the flesh. You're fulfilling the loss of the flesh, all of that. Then you reap corruption. It's just rub everything will die. Like, what did you gain? They will all be corrupted, right? Corruption means like decay. It's all passed away. But if you sow to the spirit, life everlasting, things of eternal value. Right? So that's what the Bible is trying to say. And he uses sowing because the farmer, is a, the sower, is a very patient man. <laughs> very patient. He sows, he waters, he waters. It looks like no fruit is coming. In fact, it hasn't even sprouted yet. Then he sprouts, he keeps watering, he keeps watering. That's how to overcome bad habits. For the fruits to come of what you're doing, it will take a while. But the Bible says, don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Patience is required. In St. James chapter 1, let patience have, in fact, let, but let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That means you're whole, you're complete, you're mature, and you're not lacking anything. 
Like you want to be whole as a believer, that means you're not lacking. Oh, I'm, I'm a good believer, but I don't go so in. Oh, I'm a good believer, but I don't read my Bible every day. Oh, but I'm a good believer, but you know, you have all these things. You're lacking something somewhere. But if you're patient, you continue to walk at it and walk at it and walk at it, you will be whole, perfect, lacking nothing, wanting nothing. That means you're, you're, you're complete in every aspect. All right, Rome, as I, as I said, is not in one day. Like, you can't do everything in one day. So even Rome was not built in a day, as they say. And Christianity is measured in decades. Right. <laughs> you can just, oh, you know, last year, you can't imagine, I went for every soul winning marathon, and I went, it's just one year. <laughs> do it for five years. Do it for 10 years. Then you can now say, oh, yeah, you know, this is what I do now, right? Oh, because you go so many, go so many, go so many for two months, third month, nothing. Right, but you, now the encouragement here is: don't think that you failed. Oh, there's no way I can do it. Be patient. You might lapse here. You might fall here and there. Just pick yourself back up and continue to build and continue to work hard. Okay, you missed church this one time. Okay, just pick yourself back up. Continue to work hard. Continue to try. Continue to persevere. As long as you faint not, you don't give up. Don't quit. That's the thing. And I'm talking about habits. I'm not talking about sins here. So mistakes or, or temporary lapses may happen. Don't give up, right? You know, it's okay when you make a mistake when you're trying to correct your habit. Yeah. Now, it's not okay to sin. Don't get me wrong. But when you're trying to correct your habit, we're talking about habits, making this sin a, a, a part of you, a second nature, right? Where reading your Bible is a second nature, come church is a second nature, being tardy, um, um, on, uh, not being late, being punctual is a second nature. Things like that uh, is a second nature. Like I play soccer with my friends, and yeah, you don't believe the name of my team. <laughs> the name of my team is called... Barcelona. <laughs> I know it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> if you know football at all or soccer, you know what Barcelona is. So, but these guys drink beer after every game, as much as possible. So every time they're like, you know, what do you drink? I'm like, nah. They always try to get me to drink. I'm like, nah. It's just second nature. No, I don't. And I just go home. I just come to play soccer. I just come to exercise. I can't wait for the church to grow. Where we'll have a soccer team so we can play. Because I like playing soccer. <laughs> Or even basketball, I don't care. I just want to exercise. I want to do something every time. And I'm even paying for it. Can you imagine? <laughs> so, anyway, it's just a second nature. I just, no, it's just, it, it, I'm, it, once it's a second nature to you, it's fine. That's what you want to get yourself into. A second nature of doing the right thing. Coming to church, it's a second nature, right? It, it has to be something serious. And I don't pray for that thing to happen. You know, some people are praying for something so that they go, God, come to church. You know, like, not praying per se, but wish, you know, you know, I wish it was like a bad, or I wish we had to go somewhere, or I wish I had to do this, I wish I had to do that. No, I, I, I want to come to church. Like, because, anyway, that's how you should think about these things. And so mistakes happen, don't give up, continue to persevere. Again, don't faint in your mind, it's all about the mind. You know, cast those imaginations down. Walk on yourself. And God knows our frame. And he even wants us mature believers to be patient with the weak in conscience, right? The, 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 the strong ones should be patient with the weak ones. Even pastors, what did he say? Reprove, rebuke, uh, exhort, with, uh, uh, exhort with all long suffering. So when I preach this, I say this doesn't mean, oh, I'm just, if you miss one thing, or you, then I'm going to come down hard on you. No, I've already been warned by God, you know, with all long suffering, I'm patient, right? I'm, I'll continue to try, continue to persevere, help you, and preach, but, Patience needs to work. In second, uh, all right, let's skip that because of time. All right, in conclusion, what are the five steps to overcome bad habits? Identify the bad habit. That is, for example, overspending. I tend to overspend. Remove the triggers. Uh, when I'm bored, when I'm stressed, you know, or when I'm idle, I don't have anything to do, I tend to spend my money. Like, why? Yeah, so remove that trigger, then replace them with good habits, point number three. So use the Joshua 1 example. Maybe you start meditating on the Word of God. Maybe you think about something, uh, something good, something of praise, something of good reports, all of that. How you can grow yourself, mature yourself as a believer, how you can help the church, things like that. Or you visit family, encourage people. Make visits, I mean visit believers, visit your, your, your um, brethren. Right? Not just family. I mean, visit brethren. Encourage yourself. Because now, when you're with brethren, you tend to have go godly conversation. You tend to talk something positive. You know, you tend to show up, both of you tend to show up the next Sunday. <laughs> right? So how about you visit somebody? 
Visit the brethren. Because you don't have anything to do. Instead of going to overspend, you know, just get in your car, go visit somebody, or call somebody. Encourage somebody, right? So don't say, oh, I'm bored, I'm idle, I don't know what to do. Turn on the TV, because I don't know what to do. How about you call somebody? You know, the person is busy, call somebody else. Um, don't miss church, point number three. Why? Because we need the fellowship and we need to be, uh, God gave us the church. It's a command, in fact. But God is not just a command as by his grievous. No, it's actually for our own good. You know, the church programs, church events, every time the church doors are open, anytime there's an event, anytime there's anything. See, I thought about these events that I talked about early this morning. I thought about them, how to help the church. I don't want to put stress on our schedules, in fact. I want to make sure that we all can attend, we all can benefit. If not, I'll just put everything around my own schedule. No, but I'm thinking of everyone at the same time, so that all of us can benefit as a church. Uh, so don't miss all those events, all those programs. The soul winnings, the regional soul winnings, all those things, as much as you can. You know. Then, patience. The point is, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep trying, keep trying. Don't just, because once you just hand, throw in the towel, that means you're going to live with that habit. And every time you look at yourself in the mirror, in the word of God, you're just, you're just going to forget how you look like. Is that what you want to be like? Is that the example? Is that what you want to be? James chapter 1 is talking about you. So every time you read it, that's you. If you give up and just say, you know, I'm just going to live with this habit. You have to overcome the bad habits. So examine yourselves. Know your habits. When, uh, when you're reading the Word of God, when you're hearing the preaching of the Word of God, judge if your habits are detrimental to your Christian growth. You have to make those judgments. You're wise men here, right? So, and this is why the Bible calls it a religion. Open to James chapter 1. In our Bible reading, well, let's look at the last part. Why the Bible calls it a religion? It's not just a relationship. It's a religion because there should be some habits that you have. You know, religion relates to beliefs, to culture, to morals, right? So culture, that's the way you do things, your conversation. Remove the old, con old the conversation of the old man and put on the new man. In James chapter 1, verse 26, it says, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in the affliction, to keep himself unspotted from the world. So is your religion vain? You seem to be religious. Oh, I'm religious. Oh, I come to church. Oh, I do. But what are your habits? Well, let me see what you're doing. Look at James chapter 2. It follows. You know, show me your faith by your works. What, what do you tend to do? Just what kind of religion do you have? Is it vain? Overcome your bad habits. It says, don't err, my, my beloved brethren. It says that in James 1. A verse, don't err, my beloved brethren. So don't derail your goals for this year from the beginning of the year just because of bad habits. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us about habits, overcoming bad habits. I pray, Lord, that you help us to look into the Word of God as we read your, the Bible, as we listen to preaching, that we can see ourselves as we are and um, identify those the bad habits that, that are derailing us and so that we can correct our bad habits using the steps. Oh, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you help us. I know you walk in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. It's not by might, it's not by, uh, by power, it's by your spirit. So uh, help us to surrender ourselves to you so that if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged and condemned uh, with the world. Uh, thank you, O Lord, for your word. Thank you for this church. Thank you for another year. Thank you for this Sunday. Thank you for the families here. I pray, Lord, you bless us, you keep us, um, even as we fellowship and as we go home. Uh, uh, preserve us, O oh Lord, and bring us back next time so we can celebrate and uh, the baby shower and we can fellowship with each other again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.